likely they won't take a bottle from you because um, very rarely do I see a baby take a bottle from a mom that they a nurse nursing, from. that they're nursing mm -hmm. a nursing mom well I know so, mine gave, quit the bottle shortly after six months and I wound up having to go to a sippy cup mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing no that he could do. In that either. Yeah. And it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. Did you have something, Cindy, you wanted to I was to just going to say that. If they're six months or more, they can use a sippy cup. They can mm -hmm. use solids. They don't have to have the bottle. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Until they're attached to the mom so tightly. <laughs> <laughs> um, you always hear the, you know, there's, there's some women where it becomes, it's very natural. They don't have any of the cracking or bleeding. Mm -hmm. um, how do you address the people that haven't nursed mm -hmm. and calm them down, you know, let them know, you know, there may be some uncomfort, mm -hmm. discomfort. How do you deal with that? You know, a lot of times when we get moms or first time moms in the clinic, they maybe have never seen anyone nurse. Mm -hmm. They've never really been around breastfeeding. Um, maybe they have never had anyone in their lives that have done that. Mm -hmm. And so part of it is just starting with giving them a base or knowledge about mm -hmm. breastfeeding, mm -hmm. the basics about how to be successful at breastfeeding, um, and really just giving them the support they need to be successful as well. Because there are many, I would say we have many moms that, that maybe they just it's you know something they've never mm -hmm. never been around before mm -hmm. either and so I think it's just important also that women know that there's help available and that oftentimes um, the breastfeeding experience doesn't um, come about like the books say that it might mm -hmm. and it's not as easy as we might um, anticipate or hope that it's going to be but that if um, you know with um, some education and some some help you know, we can get things going in the right direction, and um, and quite honestly, things normally do go well if we let it go well, if we don't intervene a lot. So just teaching women to um, uh, have an active role in their birth and nurse their babies as quickly as possible after their deliveries, and not to get on any kind of regimen and scheduling, um, knowing that the baby's position and latching is accurate and correct from the beginning, um, but that we can't make any guarantees for everyone. Right. Anatomically, people are very different, and the situations occur that, that the experience might be different, but that if troubles do arise, just getting help as quickly as possible will turn the problem around as quickly as possible. Well, and I've heard some women say, you know, they're in the hospital, just had the baby, the baby's not latching, mm -hmm. and they try for the day mm -hmm. or two days that they're mm -hmm. in the hospital, and then they give up. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of factors why babies don't latch initially. Oftentimes, it's um, they're waking up from a hard delivery, they've had a long, hard medicated delivery, or um, they're in the nursery too much and they haven't been with their mom a lot. So we really recommend rooming in and spending a lot of time getting to know your baby in the first 24 hours. Um, and if things aren't going well in the first 24 hours, to initiate help from staff in hospital um, before discharging so that on the, that third day we haven't given up, mm -hmm. that we've had intervention right away. So well, and I think a lot of women are misled that, that when the nurse comes to say I'm taking baby away mm -hmm. that they don't realize that they don't they can't I mean they can take it for maybe 10 minutes mm -hmm. but they have to be returned back mm -hmm. to ensure that yeah and that they don't realize that they have maybe a choice in that right. as well that they can keep their babies with them and that mm -hmm. it you know and that what we really see is that that helps initiate both breastfeeding and bonding during that early time. Right. So, and we, I know in our classes we talk a lot about really getting baby to the breast within the first hour, mm -hmm. and we see that moms that are able to initiate breastfeeding within that mm -hmm. that time period, they tend to have less problems. They tend to have um, less frustrations getting baby to go to the breast and continuing to bring baby to the breast. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes we'll see moms that are very shy. They've just had all this stuff going on with their bodies and they're in a place they're not used to and there's people coming in and out. And that tends sometimes can be a big challenge for moms. So just reminding them, you know, be in a place you feel safe and you feel comfortable and get comfortable with your baby. Yes. That it, part of it is really getting to know and learn your baby sure. and that that's a, that's a relationship that you're developing as well. So if mom's nervous, baby's going to be nervous. Sometimes, sometimes. 
Cindy, I know there's a lot of a lot of people that that they're never quite sure if the baby's getting enough milk because you can't really measure how much is intake is going on. What would you recommend to the people, uh, to the women, when they're nursing, to know if the baby's satisfied? Well, first make sure the baby latches on good and is positioned good so they're getting milk out. And you can tell by listening um, to their sucking and swallowing so that they're actively sucking and you can listen for the swallowing of the milk and mm -hmm. then you know they're getting milk. And then um, just watching to make sure that the baby nurses as long as they want to, that they act satisfied after nursing, that in between they're happy, alert, active babies. Um, if they're overly sleepy or lethargic, they're probably not eating enough okay. or if they're frantic and upset all the time they're probably not eating enough and panicked mm -hmm. <laughs> screaming yelling and monitoring but, somewhat comes out too you'll look at the output of the baby through their diapers and if they're having nice diaper output mm -hmm. um, then you know what what goes in comes out so you have right. some comfort in knowing that if nothing's coming out we may have some issue with what's going in so paying attention to that too and it's not always true that if they don't spit up all over you, they haven't gotten enough. Some, some just don't. <laughs> just don't do that. They don't do that. Sure. They, mm -hmm. they keep it in. You get the burp, but that's right. all you get. And sometimes the breastfed baby won't even burp because there's not a lot of air exchange um, while they're nursing. So, do you have any response to? A lot of times you'll have, you know, you've got the people that say, "No way, I'm not going to breastfeed." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. It's uncomfortable. It's not right. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, how do you get the women to understand that it is mm -hmm. okay and it is a choice? I'm, we're not saying that it's not a choice, but how do you help them understand a little better? Um, do you use the the bonding between the baby and the mom as a, as a good example, or I think that the approach varies between educator and for me personally and some of the people that I work with, um, it's first being tolerant of every person and their situation and what their choices are, um, but also educating them in a manner that allows them to make an informed decision about the decision they're making. Mm -hmm. And so we teach about the benefits of breast milk as a product, as a nutritional product for their baby. Um, and you approach those other things, um, the bonding and the convenience and all of those things. And, and someone will find most, I find, most women will find something about any one number of those that say, oh, I want to do it because of that, or maybe I would do it because of that. Um, but then again, just allowing someone to make that informed decision mm -hmm. and then respecting the choice that they make. Um, and they may not nurse their first child, they may their second. Um, but we just encourage all women to make a decision that they feel good about. Is there any factor or say all of a sudden at three, four months, the baby just says, I don't want the breast anymore. I mean... I find that that happens really very often. <laughs> I can. had one that way. It can. Yeah. It can happen. Um, and sometimes it's environmental things or something that's going on in their lives. But if they're just nursing really well mm -hmm. and that there are no separations with mom or um, there's not a lot of bottles and their mom's maybe not working or together, you don't find that they just give up on it on their own usually. Okay. Um, it would be, we try to just approach every situation as a unique experience and, and evaluate every mom and baby and help that baby get back to the breast if that were to occur. And, and really the moms can't lay blame on themselves for, for whatever reason the right. baby just decides and then you've got moms that unfortunately can't stop them for 